The AirPods Pro have been around for two years now, and the WWDC Apple event is coming up in 2022. And I was searching around YouTube, and I haven't found too many videos on how the AirPods Pro actually sound in the classical music setting. So I figured that since this is a violin slash classical music channel, I figured that I would share my two cents on my experience with them. And if we're meeting for the first time, my name is Eric. I'm a violinist. I do a lot of classical music and violin content on the channel. Please hit the like button. And if you're so inclined, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. So that way you get notified for when new videos come out. It helps me out as a content creator to provide more videos for you. In 2021, I made a video on Apple purchasing the classical music streaming service Prime Phonic. Now I mentioned in that video that Apple is sort of kind of working on something big in the classical music realm. And I thought that it's in regards to the spatial audio portion of their Apple Music service. Before I get to that though, I wanna share with you my experience with the AirPods Pro, how they sound like according to different classical music pieces that I've listened to for this video. So the purpose of this video is for me to explore whether or not these AirPods Pro really live up to the hype when it comes to the spatial audio and the classical music because listening to classical music is a bit of a 50-50 scenario. You have to have the right earbuds, you have to have the right over ear headphones to be able to get the best audio experience possible. And for me, the spatial audio is a really nice feature, especially when you're listening to classical music because when you're in a concert hall, you are able to kind of listen to the sound bounce off the walls and you kind of get that extra reverberance of the concert hall when you're listening to an orchestra, when you're listening to a soloist, that kind of that kind of scenario. The AirPods Pro have the spatial audio and the noise canceling feature. And the noise canceling really stand out compared to the other AirPods that are on the market. The AirPods Max is like a different animal and hopefully one day I get to review those. But right now we're just gonna stick with the AirPods Pro. Let's talk about the fit. You know, the fit is very easy to wear. I mean, I just plug them in my ears and they fit really nicely. The cool thing about the AirPods Pro is that there are many functions. You could use Siri, you can use um, the transparency features. So if you're around the house and you don't wanna take your earbuds off, gotta just click this um, side over here so that way you get the audio in your environment. Overall, I feel like the AirPods Pro are very clear sounding earbuds and they're very balanced. But if you wanna get the exact specifications on getting the classical music acoustic equalizer settings, I recommend that you go to the settings, you hit on the Apple Music app in the settings, and then you'll scroll down and you actually can switch the EQ to classical. So that is my recommendation. Um, when you're listening to the AirPods Pro and you're listening to classical music, I recommend that setting. I also recommend the, the louder bass if you are listening to a lot of cello music or if you're listening to a lot of like contra bassoon, contra bass, tuba, like lower woodwinds, I recommend that you also put it on that setting because you get a nice fuller sound in your earbud. So that's what I recommend in terms of the EQ. The few pieces that I decided to listen for this experiment is Beethoven Violin Concerto, Elgar's Cello Concerto, Bartok Concerto for Orchestra featuring Gustavo Dudamel and the Los Angeles Philharmonic, and the Ravel Piano Concerto in G major featuring pianist Ian Parker and the London Symphony Orchestra. So I have a bit of a mix of full orchestra ensemble and different soloists. So Lisa Badiashvili is a soloist for the Beethoven Violin Concerto recording that I have. That's the one I grew up with when it came out many, many years ago. So I am gonna share my experience with you on the Beethoven. When you're listening to violin solo repertoire or violin concerto, such as the Beethoven Violin Concerto, and specifically I listen to the second movement because it is so um, rich in tone and you, the violin is also kind of you know, isolated compared to the orchestra. The orchestra has a nice uh, underneath blanket that helps support the violin soloist. And to me, that is what this recording does so well, is that the violinist in this recording is really present, it's very clear, the tone is just super rich when you're listening with the AirPods Pro. The base of the sound overall is really well balanced and when I'm closing my eyes and listening to this recording, I can just feel the presence of the soloist as if I'm in the third row. That's how clear these AirPods Pro really are. However, these recordings really depend on what kind of sound engineer that you have and what kind of recording equipment you have. Every sound engineer 
um, has different philosophies on how to place a microphone near the instruments, whether they're really close and the, the speed of the microphone. I know that my friends at Earthworks Audio, who which I've mentioned on this channel before, they make high speed microphones as well as short. They're also very popular in terms of orchestral recording. And I listened to this recording with the spatial audio uh, head tracking on with the noise canceling on as well. And to me, this noise canceling and works really well. The spatial audio works decent. However, these recordings that I'm listening to were not engineered for Apple Digital Master and the spatial audio technology that they have because this was many, many years before this spatial audio technology came out. Classical music labels should be on the lookout to use this technology even more moving forward because it really enhances the listening experience and also is just a it's just a very good sound. You want to make sure that you're getting every ounce of sound into those earbuds. And the best way to do that is through the spatial audio technology that Apple has developed. The next recording I listened to was Elisa Weilerstein's recording with Daniel Barenboim, and that is the Elgar Cello Concerto, which is a really, really good recording. With this recording, I was slightly disappointed in the sound. Um, the cello, I feel like could have been slightly separated from the orchestra um, in terms of the actual sound presence. I felt that the cello was slightly muffled in the sound, especially with the bass. Although when the orchestra comes alive in the first movement of the Elgar Cello Concerto, the clarity is really it was very, very rich in terms of the sound. So I, it could be like an equalizer thing. It could be like they mastered it this way. So they, um, certain orchestra parts are more present and they are able to manipulate the sound a little more. But still with these AirPods Pro, I'm still able to close my eyes and feel like I'm just a few rows from the stage and I get to hear the clarity of the orchestra surrounding me. I just wish that there was a little bit more detail in the sound of the cello. In the next recording, I decided to listen to a piano concerto because what better way to identify good sounding earbuds than through a piano recording. And I like to listen to orchestra and piano because it really shows that contrast between strings, woodwinds, and air instruments with like a more percussive keyboard type instrument like the piano. In my view, these sound very good. These AirPods Pro sound really good with piano recordings. The reason for that is when the piano lid is lifted open and the microphones are right next to the strings, you can apply as many microphones as you want to get the ideal sound. I believe in this recording, the piano was super clear. The tone was well balanced. And I chose the second movement of the Ravel G major piano concerto because of the woodwind section. I always love listening to the woodwind section when it comes to that specific movement of that specific concerto. The woodwinds in my view sounded very rich and just had an overall beautiful unified tone. And last but not least, I decided to listen to a full-blown orchestra with no soloists, and that is with the Bella Bartok's Concerto for Orchestra conducted by Gustavo Dudamel, who is the music director of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. And this is one of my favorite recordings because it has a lot of fire in that last movement, and that's actually um, the movement that I listened for this video. What I liked about this recording is that it had a balanced sound throughout the entire orchestra. I did find myself putting the volume up a little bit, even with the classical music EQ installed on Apple Music, I just, I had to get a little bit more volume in my earbuds because some parts were, you know, in the softer dynamics, some parts were in a louder dynamic. So I kind of had to adjust as I was listening. So in general though, I was able to hear the articulation of the pizzicato of the, the, the detail between the strings and the rosin and the bow hair. I was able to hear that detail pretty clearly in these Apple AirPods Pro. Well, should you buy these AirPods Pro? That is the question you're probably asking when you're watching this video. Well, yes and no. I think the pro of these AirPods is that you're gonna get a very clear balanced tone no matter what kind of music you're listening to when it comes to classical genres, romantic genres, if you're listening to like Mozart Requiem or Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. You're gonna get a clear tone all the way through. And luckily through the Apple Music settings, you can adjust it to get the classical EQ. And to me, that is the best sounding equalizer for listening to classical music. However, the big, big con is that the spatial audio with Dolby Atmos 
is a subscription-based service. And there are not a lot of classical music albums out there that have the spatial audio Apple Digital Master technology involved in the headphones. So that could be a reason why you may not get these AirPods Pro if you are like a diehard classical music person. The articulation of the strings and the woodwinds and the brass and even the percussion in an orchestral setting is like really, really nice. So you can't go wrong with these AirPods. So yeah, that downside with the subscription service, it's kind of a low blow because uh, you know, you spend over $200 on these AirPods and you wanna make sure you're getting like the best audio possible. I mean, the spatial audio is kind of built in, but I think it'll be even better if you apply an album that has a spatial audio and a spatial audio technology and combine them too. I think it'll be really, really good sounding experience for you. So let me know your thoughts. What do you think about the AirPods Pro? Have you listened to them with classical music? And if so, what are some improvements you think you can make um, with the AirPods Pro moving forward in the classical music genre? Let's start this conversation down below. I read every comment and I wanna respond to you. Thanks again for watching. If you liked this video, hit the like button so that way more people can watch this kind of video. And if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. It helps me out as a classical music content creator to provide more videos for you. Thanks so much and I will see you in the next video.